Drawing the head or a portrait can be difficult at times, but there are methods out there that can help make it easier for you. One of those methods is the Andrew Loomis method that I've shown you here before in another video where I drew the head in a three quarter pose. And once again, I'm going to show you here. Hiya, Vic Frere of Vic Frere Art here. I paint and I draw. In this video, I will be going over the Loomis method once again from this nifty book right here. It's sort of my go-to book when I am doing portraits. This book has been and continues to be very helpful to me on my art journey. Since I can remember, I have always been interested in drawing people's faces. It has taken me years to truly learn how to draw portraits without the use of any aids like grids, projectors, and other tools. I have found that the Loomis method is not some magical system, but rather a simple way to think of the head as a basic form and interpreting it correctly with its proportion, perspective, and lighting to create a portrait. My aim is to show you how I learned to draw people. I hope you find some value in this video. If you do, please consider leaving a comment down below, telling your friends about it, and hitting that subscribe button if you haven't. So let's get on with it then. Thank you for watching. Peace. In my last tutorial, I showed how I use the Loomis method to draw the head when it's posed in angles like the three quarter. But you can also use this method for other angles like the front and the profile or the side. I will be doing another video drawing the head from the profile, by the way. So once again, we start with a circle to indicate the cranium. Now, if we simplify the head, we can think of the skull as two main parts. The brain case shown by the circle or sphere and the facial skeleton shown by the box. The very first thing I'd like to do is to determine whether the person is looking up or down. And that's easy to do. I showed you in the last video how to do this. So we look at the distance from the ear to the brow. If the ear is higher than the brow, and that means the person is looking down. And if the ear is lower than the brow, then the person is looking up. In this picture here, he's looking straight at us, so they are level. Now, I like to measure my circle to make sure it's as close to a circle as possible. Just remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. I also like to find the center of the circle first. I don't always use a ruler. In fact, I hardly ever do, especially when I'm drawing a live model, but it's important to find the middle as best as possible. What I'm doing here now is establishing uh, the divisions of the head like I did in the previous video breaking the head into thirds. From the center of the circle to the top of the head is equally divided into three parts and the same to the bottom. Now from the center to the two-thirds mark is the height of where you cut off the sphere or the side of the head to create that plane, you know, making it look a little bit like a baseball. Another thing I like to do is I like to make sure that both sides are the same. Uh, the camera is actually on my left side, so I'm having to lean in a little bit to the right. So I noticed that the left side was a little bit wonky and I needed to fix it. So now what I'm doing is I'm slicing off a little bit more of the sphere. If you remember on the first video, I showed how the skull actually tapers in. So I'm indicating that by taking off a little bit more of the sphere. You can always come back and fix some areas that you're not comfortable with, like I'm doing here. Okay, now that we have the center determined, we can draw a line indicating the top of the brow. Okay, now we can go ahead and start drawing the line from the brow to the bottom of the nose right here. And remember, it's right at the bottom of that oval that we drew. And we use that same distance from the nose to the bottom of the chin. We can just use our pencil to measure it down. And then to the top of the brow from the same distance. So in essence, uh, the head is divided into thirds. Now we can start drawing the jaw. Usually the jaw will start getting thinner at the bottom. 
and then you want to determine the width of the chin. And now we can start drawing the center line. It's a little bit crooked. Again, my hands are shaky, but uh, you can go ahead and fix that when you notice. Now you may notice that sometimes your drawings will be a little bit crooked, the lines will be crooked, but remember that no face is perfect and you can make adjustments once you start adding all of the facial features. So now I start drawing the ears. And the ears usually fit in between the brow and the bottom of the nose. Now each person is different, like I said, so some ears may be bigger than others. I made a mistake here with the ear on the right. I put it too close to the brow. And so I'm making a quick adjustment here. Again, remember that this is one type of process or method to help you get better at drawing heads. The more you practice this, the easier it will be for you to know where to place the facial features. And once again, I will save the tutorial for drawing the facial features for another video. I've had requests for those, so please stay tuned as I process those videos and I continue to improve while learning how to make these videos for you. Please remember to subscribe and hit the bell to receive notifications of upcoming videos if you haven't already. Again, thank you. Peace.